Stephanie Calvert. And you're listening to Play That Rock and Roll. This is not a test. This is Play That Rock and Roll. I'm your host, Joseph K., and like the song at the start says, just call me Joe. Today is part two of our conversation with former vocalist for Starship featuring Mickey Thomas, Stephanie Calvert. Stephanie sang with Starship from 2006 to 2021. Unfortunately, she was fired from the band. And today, we're going to get into the reasons of why that happened. If you missed part one, be sure to check that out first. In that conversation, we talk about how she got the Starship gig. We talk about some of the residency acts she's performed with, like Raiding the Rock Vault, Monday Stark, and Rockers Collective. She shared her favorite songs to sing on stage. She talked to us about how Grace Slick was an influence on her, and she shared her some um, positive and difficult memories about Starship's best and worst gigs. And of course, we concluded with a conversation about the tragic passing of Starship guitarist Mark Abrahamian. In this part today, we're going to talk about her experience recording on the 2013 Starship album, Loveless Fascination. And like I said, we're going to get into why she is no longer with the band today. At this point, Stephanie does not have a website or any public social media, but when she gets those online, I will be sure to share them on my social media. So be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and Twitter. So without further ado, here's part two of my conversation with former vocalist of Starship featuring Mickey Thomas, Stephanie Calvert. would like you to tell me a little bit about your experience uh, working on the recording side of the Loveless Fascination album. Are there any duets on that? I should know this off the top of my head, but I didn't didn't get to this CD this week. Just one. Okay, there is just one. So tell me what it was like recording the backing vocals and the duet with Mickey in the studio. How did you enjoy that experience? Or did you not enjoy it? Oh, are you kidding? I, I love being in a studio being in a studio is so special it's it's in, incredible i and i'm one of those people that i don't want any i don't want any pitch correction i don't want any of that so if i have to do like 15 takes i'll do 15 takes before it's right because i don't want anything changing the way that i sound or anything like that and i I feel like I do pretty well in a studio. Some people are really uncomfortable. I remember our guitar player at the time, he doesn't do well. He didn't, this was before he passed away. He yeah. does, he's not comfortable in a studio for some reason at his own studio at home, but I don't oh. know if the pressure's on. He just didn't quite get it. Some people are better at performing in person and some people are really made for studio work. Um, he's not, he wasn't. So we got a, a local person from Las Vegas because we recorded this at the Tone Factory, which is a great recording place in Las Vegas. Um, and the owner's really awesome. And um, so we went there and I remember just calling a local guitar player friend of mine who is phenomenal. His name is John Wiedemeyer. And he came in and did uh, some of the guitars on those. Mickey recorded a lot of those songs at Jeff Tamalier's uh, studio. I'm pretty sure it was at Jeff Tamalier's studio in, I want to say Northern California. Um, okay. And Jeff Pilsen, who is the bass player for Foreigner, yep. he wrote most, if not all of the songs that Mickey, just Mickey sang on, except for maybe two, I think. And the musicians like over there recorded it. And I know I was okay. super bummed because I really wanted it to be where we all got to do it. But Mickey went over there and recorded all these songs with them and the background vocals over there. And then we did two um, in Las Vegas. And, and But then we rehearsed the whole album and stuff like that. So that's the process that went on there. I'm only on the one song. Okay. The duet. 
um, and I loved it. It was great. Yeah. It's a great song, so I I can say like I recorded, you know, Starship. <laughs> That's a cool thing. So yeah, absolutely, I, you, I, you are now codified as part of the legacy. You know, yes, you so know, you should be proud of that. I am proud. I mean, I don't. <laughs> not that the record sales were phenomenal or off the charts, <laughs> but I, you know, I have a copy, and it was a pretty special experience for me. I love being in the studio, so it was a, it was a great process. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I looked up the album credits and I did see that it seems almost like a Jeff Pilson project. He's all over that album. Was Mickey happy with the final result? Was, was there any reason why you guys uh, didn't do another one after that? Okay, so um, I think he was pretty happy with the results. I think that he was discouraged about the sales of the album. But again, we're talking yeah. about a, an, a, an entity of not being your own best promoter. He's not great at self-promotion yeah. or, you know, really finding the right people to push, push, push. And yeah. so if it doesn't go at a certain pace, at some point, he's just like, yeah. Oh, well. And, and unfortunately that's, you know, that his strong point is not that he's not a self promoter. That's not his strength. He needs someone that's really good yeah. at putting them on, you know, having the right social media person, having the mm -hmm. right, you know, especially in this t time. Yeah. You know, this, you know, it's 2022 now, but I mean, it's been like this for a while. Everything is internet based. Everything is promotion, 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 you know, and, and really finding the right people that will keep you um, in people's faces so that you still stay relevant in this time. Uh, because unfortunately, we're at a time where our attention spans are so distracted and so short yeah. that you, you have to stay relevant by being annoyingly present. All yeah. So he's, again, he's old school. He's, I mean, he doesn't have in-ears. He doesn't, you know, those are, he's oh, a okay. rocker. And so yeah. and again, his personality is very passive, very, and so his strengths aren't self-promotion. And again, he needed to find, he needed to find the right people to push. And I just don't think that it all clicked. And that's why it didn't go as far as it probably could have. Yeah. And I still think, that if he did that, I think that, I mean, if you start pushing it again, I don't think that people would mind listening to it. Honestly, it's a great album. There's yeah. some really cool songs on there. Jeff's really, really talented. So. Well, you, you touched on something that reminded me of the only social media exchange I've had with Mickey is that uh, how can I put this? So, I mean, maybe you can speak to this sort of oddity about Starship and social media. There's an official at Starship on Twitter that posts, like, old pictures and, like, stupid memes and it really airheaded stuff that doesn't do anybody any right. good, right? right? And I noticed... That, uh, I think... Oh, man, this is crazy. I think they posted a picture of Donnie Baldwin... And they were like, look at this guy's hair. And Mickey tweeted them underneath and said, yeah, he also knows how to punch his bandmate's face or something like that. Something sort of a, uh, sort of intense. So Passively I, intense? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Get it. Well, there, yeah, there you it go. It sounds like Mick. Yeah, I mean, that's the right. kind of thing you do. Right, right. So, so yeah, I saw that exchange. Cool. And I thought that was absolutely crazy because I just assumed Mickey owned that Starship account. So I tweeted at him and I'm and I asked, Mickey, is this not your account? And he said, No, it's run by social media clowns or something. Yeah. And I and then I saw that the his version of Starship is at Starship Control. What is going on with this social media thing? Do you know anything about that? Now he has his own Twitter account that he does. Yeah. You know, he has, 
he's very political. Okay. Yeah. Which I always think is a, is great for him on a personal side, but on a professional side, you have to know your crowd. And um, I don't always think that that's the greatest thing to do, but he, oh, there are so many rock stars who tweet about it. politics all day. You and it's just like, even if I agree with the politics, I don't want to hear it. But right. anyway, I, I know. Well, yeah. I mean, that's probably another reason why I'm not in the band anymore, but, um, oh. but I will say like, he's got his own tweet Twitter account. So he likes yep. to post stuff about once in a while. He, he's not as, con- I mean, he might be now. I don't check it obviously. Um, but I know he has his own Twitter account. As far as social media goes, they do have a Facebook account, um, which is Starship featuring Mickey Thomas. It's, yeah. it's kind of kept up on, but again, it's not, it's, they don't have an actual, like, I know that the bass player's wife was running it too, but she has so many other things. It's not like, it's okay. not like constant, you know, doing things and, um, you know, having contests so that the fans come in, having yeah. certain things that the fans, you know, having things where the fans are, are, you know, wanting to go back to that page. And yeah. so again, you know, you either know how to do it or you fix, find the people that want to do it, or you just, it's not your thing. Like he, I don't know how much longer he's going to be doing this. I don't know if he wants to do it for another 20 years or 10 yeah. years. I don't know how many years he has left in doing this. And he might just be at that point where he's just like, this is what I do and I'll get the shows that I get and, and then I'll bow out gracefully. I, I don't know. Um, but you know, Oh, that's weird because there, there is like an official starship social media account that does post every day, but it's not starship featuring Mickey Thomas. No, no, that's crazy. (laughs) I've never heard of something like that. (laughs) Again, you have to have people like if, yeah, you have to want to make that change. You have to want to be that person or, or delegate somebody that yeah. really takes control of that and puts it on another level to get you to the million fans, to get you to the likes, to get you that. And that's just not, I don't think that's something that he's really that interested in. I remember being in there and wanting to help in any way that I can, but that I think was a nuisance more uh, for them than it was uh, of them thinking I was trying to be supportive. I think they thought it was a different aspect of whatever, but I, as far as social media goes, they are just not 2022 up to 2022 standards yet. They'll either get there or they just won't. It's just, yeah. it might not be something that they're interested in. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, we've, we've put this off. I, I think we've covered a lot of great topics. I really do appreciate with uh, how open you're being. And this has been a really fun conversation, but uh, I, I think we'd be doing your sur- a story a disservice if we didn't uh, uh, talk about why you're not in Starship anymore. So for those who don't know, let me uh, set this up best I understand it. And then you correct me if I say anything wrong, and then we can expand upon it a little bit. So my understanding of what happened is that Starship was set to tour in Europe, and Europe has some very severe uh, COVID restrictions, vaccine mandates, and the band needed to know who was vaccinated uh, against COVID-19 and who wasn't and how that was going to be going forward. And the video you posted on your social media on your Facebook, you said that you met with your doctor, you have a medical issue that prohibits you from getting a COVID vaccine, so you couldn't get that, and you unfortunately caught COVID before the tour, so it looked like they were gonna have to find someone to fill in for you, but as it turns out, you recovered, thankfully, you know, without it being serious, you recovered in time to make the dates in Europe, but the band told you, Mickey told you to wait and that they were going to go forward with the fill-in anyway, and then revisit after the European tour or whatever. And after a month or so, he got in touch with you and told you that they were going to go forward with the new singer. Is that a good recap of what happened? It's almost as a nicer version of it 
and we okay can, okay we can, well then then, then well, nice let's not possible. you know i don't want to whitewash anything i don't want to make yeah. anything pretty if it's not tell me tell me what what did i miss no, it's okay because i mean like i don't even know what to say because uh last i heard from mr thomas was that i had a pity party on social media and that i know his wife's dad passed away and it kept her from mourning him because of my disparaging the band and or trash talking the band and my pity party and that if next time that we speak we'll be with his attorneys so oh boy which i I didn't despair oh it's you know you gotta do it i I don't know why there's so much animosity um but to me i just don't know how you can treat somebody after 15 years that way but he did they did and that's just how it goes. I, I didn't disparage the band in my video. People were on, to, like this, the fans were constantly trying to find out what happened. And when, at, here, I'll try to cliff note it. I got COVID. We had dates before the Europe tour. Yeah. I got COVID about three weeks before our next gig. I took too long to tell them that I had COVID, basically, is what, what it oh, all okay. about. So they thought that when you get COVID, even though we have three weeks to go and I have two other girls that I've used as subs that I'm sure would have been absolutely happy to do the shows. And this was not the Europe shows. Anyway, um, Mm -hmm. I got tested positive um, again, three weeks before a show. I freaked out because the whole world freaks out. And if you watch all that stuff, if you have COVID, you're going to die or you're going to find someone to kill or whatever it is. So I was, my mom was visiting. She was supposed to leave the next day. My mom is 69. She was 69 at the time, had diabetes, high blood pressure, all the things. And I was scared. I didn't want her to get it. My husband had to leave for tour. Yeah. I, we were together. We didn't know. So I had to worry about him. And then I had to call all the people that I had seen over the weekend to make sure. Absolutely that they knew that I tested positive for COVID. I was at, a, at a, this church convention thing. So I couldn't call everybody, but I let them know. I called the church and I said, hey, I have COVID. I don't know if I got it there. I could have gotten it at the grocery store. I could have gotten it here. I could have gotten it anywhere. We don't know. So that's what I did. And I was not feeling well. And I did the best that I could. Like within 10 minutes of, of calling, like I would say within an hour probably of finding out I had COVID, travel agent called me who talks to Mickey every day. And she said, Hey, you sound pretty rough. And I was like, yeah, I know. I just tested positive for COVID. Uh, she's like, well, I'm, Oh no. And I was like, yeah, I know. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, I'll let you know. I mean about the traveling so far, you know, I just got to talk to my doctor, whatever. I don't even know the whole conversation. It was a nine minute conversation yeah. because I checked on my phone. I didn't call Mick. She was going to call Mick anyway, but I wasn't going to call Mickey until I talked to my doctor because okay. I wanted to know, like, what does this mean? What do I have to do? When can I do something? But, you know, that's the first thing you're thinking is like, please don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to kill yeah. my mom. I wasn't thinking like, oh, I have three weeks to go. Let me call Mickey Thomas and right. tell him about COVID so that they freak out and they tell the whole band so that the whole band freaks out yep. without needing to freak out. Because right. I wanted to talk to my doctor so that if they have any questions, I can say, my doctor said this, 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 and this. And so, um, so he ended up calling me the day I saw my doctor before I could call him. And he said, hey, I heard you have COVID. So basically, that's what happened. And in the process of this, they're like, I said, well, look, I'm going to, he said, well, just call me after that. But the way that he was speaking was like, well, how's your real estate going? And I was like, why do you care? I had to get my license during 2020 when we didn't have anything because I had money. So then I was like, it's not my heart, obviously. And so then like things started coming together and like he would like, he asked, I found out who he asked to be in it. And that freaked me out because I, she's definitely capable of taking the job, which is fine. And, Mm. you know, God bless her. But I, she never reached out to me until later after the day I told Mickey. That and this is someone you knew, the, yep. the new vocalist? Yeah, okay. So at the end of the day, just the way that he spoke, and then 
he like literally said, okay, well, we're going to just put her on for the next couple. And then they decided to put her on all, like six more shows, like six shows. And I'm like, mm. what? He's like, we'll revisit this. And he left me hanging for a month. Not, hey, you don't have to worry about your job. We love you. We just want you to right. get better. Right. Nobody called me to say, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? Like, that's so, it blows my mind what fear does to people and how it makes them become the worst versions of themselves. Yeah. Because if I, when someone I know got COVID and they weren't feeling good, I'd be like, hey, what can I do? I'll drop off some soup at your house. Do you need me to, do, I'll call a delivery if you're in a different state. I'll, what do you need? It was like, how, are you okay? I'll check on them. And that's what you do for family. So it blew my mind what happened in the process of all this. And now, you know what? She's a new person. She comes in super fun, whatever it is. And now they're like, Ooh, fresh blood. We don't have to worry about someone who's so high maintenance with food or doesn't have to, you know, like mm -hmm. different and she's vaccinated. So okay. I found out from a fan that someone had written to her who's related to Mickey wrote to her and said basically what the plan was before I even knew. So I knew this plan for almost a month knowing that they were going to fire me, but hoping that he changed his mind. And I wrote him this beautiful letter before the six, it was September six. He was supposed to call. And of course he still made me wait an extra day because he was tired. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this letter saying like how much it meant and that they're family to me. And I love you. Yeah. And I'll do anything. I will wear 15 masks. I will get tested every day. Yeah. Don't do this. This is my, this is my life. And you guys like what, I don't know what I did to yeah. deserve this. And he let me go. Not, it wasn't even a conversation of like, listen, you know, it's a really hard time right now with this vaccine and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't like you've given us 15 years. Thank you so much for all the time you've given. You've been such an asset to us and we love you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. It was not like that at all. It was just like, sorry, we're moving on. Yeah. People changed is what he said. People change. I'm like, Jeez. okay. So that's kind of what happened with the process of it. And it, it broke my heart because even if he would have fired me with an, a, a very loving, kind, or respectable way, it still would have sucked, and it would have been hard for me. Yeah. But it would have made me go, you were like, I mean, literally when I was 12 or 13 years old, in my yearbook, under favorite bands, my number one was Starship. I loved them. When he called me on the phone for the first time to tell me I got this this show, I freaked out because it was Mickey Thomas. Like, it was like a dream because he was such a huge thing in my life. They were my favorite band. And then it's like what they say. It's like never meet your heroes because honestly, it was so, it could have been handled so different. Yeah. And it, dev, it was literally life devastation for me and it didn't even that it's not even a thought process for them to know how it affected my life like right. what happened to me what it did to my life and instead I gave them two months before I said anything because I said look don't tell people I'm fired because I was embarrassed I was so embarrassed that they fired me and I thought the fans would judge or whatever stupid thing that goes through your mind and I was so yeah. there. And I hung up the phone. He's like, well, go ahead. And, you know, we'll just say it was a mutual parting. And I said I would write like a press release. And I gave them two months before I, because I wasn't ready. And I just was so angry. And I was like, why am I going to let them off the hook? Yeah. Why am I going to tell people that it was a mutual parting? Right. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell everybody what actually happened, what actually was said in the conversation and how I was treated. I'm yeah. not going to make up anything. I'm just going to tell the truth and then let the chips fall where they lie because that's what happened. And now because people got so upset, it made him upset and thinking that I'm trying to disparage them in any way. And no, I'm sorry, but you made a mistake in the way you handled it. Maybe you, you have every right to decide who gets to be in your band, but right. to treat people that way when you walk around telling people how you got to help each other and you got to be kind and you've got to do this. And then you treat one person in your band who's never done anything ugly to you mm -hmm. ever. 
and you treat them like they're just that piece of garbage on the side of the road that you just throw in the trash and never again think twice about it. And I'm sorry, but you just don't treat people that way. So of course, I'm going to tell people what happened, but I didn't say anything ugly. I didn't say anything ugly about any of them, but I just told the truth and that bothered them because people were really, really upset because yes, I have a fan base too. Yeah. I, I was part of this band. I made friends. I, I cared about the fans and they cared about me. And I'm sorry that I did that, but I, that's my personality. And if you don't like me anymore, or if there was something I was doing, you should have sat down and said, Hey, I don't like when you do this, this, or this, or, Hey, this really bothers me. Can you work on this? And I would have, because I care about them. I cared about them and I cared about my job. So that's kind of what happened. And, um, and I think they just used COVID as an excuse to get rid of me. But apparently, like I said, this girl, he thinks she's the bee's knees. And mm -hmm. if that's where he wants to go, let him go there. I don't want to be in a band that doesn't want me there. Of course. I'm not a bad person. You I, know. I do my job and I really care about people. And, and so obviously this door is shut, but another one will open. I put a band together and we're going to be on the road soon. I already know it and I've got... I've got all the players in, in line and it's going to be an all-star band. And I'm really excited about the project that I put together now. And, and, and maybe that's what was supposed to happen. I mean, obviously it's what I have to make lemonade out of the lemons of life. So. And, and another thing that they can't take from you is that you put 15 years worth of work onto the stage in service of that band. You got that band, younger fans, and you got the fans engaged and you you played those songs in the ways that they should be played and uh it, it is a it's it as a fan i'm disappointed you know that you're not in the group and i'm sorry to make you cry but uh it's okay i'm an emotional person i cry over all the things but it yeah. really did it was a i appreciate you and i appreciate you letting me tell my story and and wanting to still validate me as a as a singer just in general so i really appreciate you doing that and like it means a lot to me it really does well it, it means a lot to me that you would you would share your your story with me uh you know i i've been a fan since uh, uh when i saw you guys play i regret that i didn't take more opportunities to see you over the years um i hope whatever New project you have uh, comes through my neck of the woods. I will absolutely make a point to uh, to see that. And yeah, as as a fan of of Mickey's as well, it's disappointing to hear this because when I saw your social media post, what really yes, it's disappointing that you're not in the band. But what was truly like the feeling of a letdown was that you said that you caught COVID. And because of your medical situation, you can't be vaccinated. That is potentially a very dangerous scenario. And I would have expected that the band would have at least showed more concern about your own well-being. You know, I know a lot of people who've caught COVID over these last two years before the vaccines, and some just can't be vaccinated. And the situations have uh, gone from light cases to hospitalizations and yeah. harrowing stories. So I, I thank goodness that you didn't have a life-threatening or terrible situation that, that you pulled through and you made it uh, and, and your, you, your mother made it through and, and you're, yes, you're doing yeah. well. And that, and that is the only thing that I that is truly distasteful is that that they wouldn't make that a concern right and the whole story just reminds me of as someone who reads a lot of rock and roll biographies it's sort of an yeah. old habit of old school show business where there's this unwritten rule of don't get sick you know i read a lot of bob dylan biographies and bob used to fire band members like this all the time they would get sick they would need a little bit of time off and he would bring in a sub and then they'd call about the gig and he'd be like we're just going to go forward with what we have and 
in the same sort of passive, not really confrontational way, because yeah. at least according to these Dylan biographies, Bob is a guy who avoids confrontation, and oftentimes if an, a, a, a band member he didn't feel strongly about, he had an opportunity to move on from, even if it was a very cynical way of doing it, he would do that. And I, he wasn't the only one, and it's sad to see that old bad habit still around today. My husband has a friend that works for Garth Brooks, okay? Garth Brooks is huge, okay? Oh, yeah. Like huge. And very relevant right now and has a huge fan base and all of those things. This man took, sat his band down and his crew and said, listen, this is really serious. If you can't get vaccinated, I am. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, I understand. So yep. what I'm going to do is for the next year and a half, whoever can't or won't, I'm going to, you know, bring these people in and in a, well, you know, in a year and a half, hopefully it'll be gone, but you have your jobs and I want you to feel secure. And so he gave them like this incentive and he gave them like, I want to say he might've given them compensation as they're waiting, but he's like, I understand. And I'm not going to make you do anything that you can't or don't want to do. And, yeah. but I'm going to bring these people in and in a year and a half, your job is secure. I just want you to know that you're irreplaceable. And that's how you care for the people who dedicate their lives and are super loyal to your project, to your, your job. And this is, yeah. that was like when my husband told me that, of course I was crying because I'm like, it's that simple of how you treat yeah. people. Yeah. And, you know, I guess if I was a really, horrible human being. Cause the fact that they made it sound like I was trying to hide COVID from them yeah. blew my mind. Like, I mean, they literally told people like, I never told them I had COVID and mm -hmm. that blew my mind because I'm like, what kind of person, I mean, I, you've known me for 15 years. Yeah. You think that I would be like, Ooh, I'm not going to tell them I have COVID so that they, I hope they all get it. And I hope I, first off, if I kill off the band, I don't have a yeah. job. Okay. <laughs> So right. <laughs> why would I risk that? And I've offered everything. So it blew my mind that they would just kind of process that in their brain, that they've, they've gotten to this place of animosity or fear or whatever they want to use to, to say that this person who literally never done anything cruel or harmful or anything would be that horrible. And so that's kind of why I, one of the main reasons why I also did that video, because I was like, I'm not going to allow them to let people or think that I was like trying to keep it a secret from them. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I mean, I mean, the whole issue of, you know, I, we're, I, we can't get into it, but the whole issue of COVID vaccines, you can't even have a discussion without it getting so incredibly toxic immediately. Uh, so I think, you know, it, it, the more honest you are, the better the fan reaction is going to be. And, uh, you right. know, so I know your fans are, are appreciative that you were forthcoming with them because I, I guess Starship never did put out a press uh, release of any kind about your departure, correct? Right. Yeah. Oh, then you're still in the band. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But I honestly, I think that if they decided to put a press release, because he was mad because he said, I thought you didn't want me to tell you that. And you said you were going to come at press release. And I'm like, I gave you guys two months to call me back and say, look, yeah. I'm sorry. But you yeah. didn't. And I gave you guys two months for one of you guys to reach out to see if I'm okay or to do the right thing. And you didn't. And then I got pressured into doing this. And then I was like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I don't need to lie. I'm not a liar. So I'm going to let everyone know what happened so that people know what, ha what happened to me because it's not fair because there's other people in this industry or in life who yeah. have jobs that got treated like this for something so crazy. And I wanted to tell that story so that people understand that there's other, that they feel strong enough to be able to say like, okay, this happened to me too. I mean, and so that, that's what happened. And, and I'm sorry that I'm sorry it went down this way. I'm sorry that he felt that way about me. And I'm sorry that he feels that the 15 years that I was in that band, I'm sorry that it meant absolutely nothing to him. That I absolutely was not even a minuscule moment in his heart. Like there was nothing about me in his heart at all.
it got to a point where apparently it changed. So people changed so much that you just, that's the part. Like, I'm sorry that it went down that way. Cause I would have never, I would have never been this. I, I would never treat that people, any of them this way ever, never. So you describe him as a very non-confrontational guy. And you mentioned just a moment ago that you think COVID, the whole COVID vaccine thing was just sort of an excuse for something he maybe wanted to do for some time. Is Did you ever pick up on any sort of under the surface resentment? There was just a, like, mostly with his significant other, um, like a, a, I know there was a situation with another wife in the band that had mentioned like, Hey, to the wife, like this okay. is who you should have singing in the band. And then she showed her a video of some girl. I don't know who it was, but, oh. another, and that got back to me. And okay. I just thought, okay. So I I'm very much like, Hey, did this happen? What happened? So I sat down with him and I said, Hey Mick, this is what happened. I wanted to know if you and Rachel were planning or like talked about this or are you planning on letting me go? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know what I did, but I mean, if that's something, can you please let me know? I mean, I'll work on something, you know, I know at that particular show, I got really mad because I got locked out of the room and I had to go to the oh. bathroom and you know, it was just like, and it just became this like little girl, like me, me thing. Mm-hmm. And I just don't, I'm not that person. So I, so I'm very much like, did this happen? And I even had to confront one of the, one of the players' wives who, who started this situation. And I was like, why would you do that? And, she, you know, of course, played it down and whatever. But he said, no, never. Like, that would never happen. And I mm-hmm. literally remember also when I was going through the stomach situation and having to run off a few times, I got to a place where, and this was years before that or a couple years, just a couple years before that thing came up. And I remember sitting with him and I was like, can we talk? And I said, look, I feel like I'm not an asset to the band right now because of what's going on with my stomach. Mm -hmm. I can't really afford to, you know, the only doctors don't natural pass, you know, they cost a lot, blah, 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 blah. I don't feel like I'm, I'm an asset to you and maybe I should leave and and that's okay. Like, I just want you to know that I, I think it's best for the band without me in it because I felt like there were just comments made like, wow, you know, maybe you shouldn't be, you're in the wrong line of work or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that really affected me. And I thought, well, if I'm not being an asset or if I'm costing the band something, or if I'm making the band look bad by having a moment, I can't change what happens to me. I can't change my disorder. So it, I said, you know, and he's like, no, I never, like, I want you to stay and blah, blah, blah. So he had Mm -hmm. opportunities, Mm -hmm. but he kept me probably because he didn't have anyone in the wings that he Mm. could replace me with. So now it all comes together because I really thought that he, I really thought he wanted me there and he didn't, or maybe someone else didn't. I just think that again, at the end of the day, there's a way to treat people and there's a way not to treat people. And that's it. What's that old joke? Um, You're only as single as your options. (laughs) <laughs> you know, something like that. Well, then I guess uh, maybe the last thing we can conclude on here um, is sort of a um, olive branch peacekeeping note is that uh, as, as far as the new girl that's singing with the band, you've said this before, and I want to give an opportunity for you to say it again, that for fans of yours who are sad that you're not in the band anymore, um, we, we can't have any harassment or uh, online abuse or any bad behavior towards the new vocalist, no matter how lousy the situation is, right? Let's, we should be clear about that. Yeah. I don't, I'm not condoning that at all. Yeah. Like, again, if you prefer not to participate yeah. in going to see the band, that's fine. I'm, I will say this as an honest note, I'm very disappointed in the way that that happened on a professional level because we did know each other and it could uh, once again been handled a lot better. Yeah. And uh, obviously have not spoken to her. Um, but I, I'm not an advocate of, of ugliness like that at all. Right. Because that's something that should have been handled. They should have handled that with you. And it's not the fan's job to go and chase after her or anything. Just to be as clear as day.
Okay. No, and because I, at, the, at the end of the day, I can walk away from both that situation and the Mickey situation, knowing that I did everything that I could mm-hmm. to be as professional. And as I try to be, and I'm emotional and I cry. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to call it a pity party, I don't care. But mm-hmm. I, it affected me because I took things to heart because my heart was in it. So yeah, it's going to affect me, but I'm not going to treat somebody poorly. And if mm-hmm. her and I ever cross paths, I'll, probably sit and chat with her and tell her, you know, I really wish that it would have happened this way. Yeah. Um, because we did know each other on a professional and friendly acquaintance level. And we've done things together before. I mean, she was in rock, rock ball too. And so, yeah. you know, it there was just a, there's just a certain way that, you know, that you are how I would handle things. And unfortunately not everybody does the same thing that you hope that they would do. Right. And, yeah. but at the end of the day, she's a great singer. And if they're happier with her, I, I hate that because, yeah. you know, I'm, I want to be the one that, that, that they're sad. That's not in the band anymore, but if this is sure. a better fit for them, for whatever reason, uh, then so be it. Then I was meant to do something else. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also, unfortunately, at the end of the day, the music industry is still a brutal business. And uh, your story is absolutely an example of that. So I, I really want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing both the joys and the triumphs of your time with the band and for telling us about your projects outside of the band and, and for sharing the harder stuff, not just about the breakup, but about the, your guitarist. Uh, so I, I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your story. And to, for the last thing we'll, we'll touch on real quick is, is it, what can you tell me about the new band you're putting together? Well, I don't, I'm not going to go into massive details, but just like sure. everybody, in the band, it's kind of like a rockers collective slash rock vault kind of thing where everybody in the band is, has been in a, or is touring with a band that's, you know, a prominent a name. super group. It's a super group. <laughs> yeah. So it's really like a super, a cool super group of just really cool people that love to play music and we're just going to go out there and and do some shows. So that's, that's kind of the gist of it all. And then eventually you'll get the names of everybody that's in it. And, um, but I know that everyone will be really happy and uh, it'll be a great show. So I'm excited to be classic rock. Mostly classic rock because that's where I live most of my life. Yeah. Um, I love classic rock and it's, it lets me be, you know, try to be my powerhouse self. So okay, that's where I like to go. So there's a lot of classic rock and then I'll probably throw in a couple of my favorite things. Maybe if I know you're in the show, I'll make sure that we do for your eyes only. I promise. Please. <laughs> where do you live? I don't even know. Where, where do you live? I'm in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'll go back up to Wisconsin again. I'm, I have a friend out there that does these all stars under the stars uh, oh. concert over in, I forget where it's at, but it's in Wisconsin. So it's not crazy far. Um, and I'll let you know if we do that show. Oh, that'd be terrific. I would yeah. absolutely any, yeah. Anytime you're in my neck of the woods or even Chicago, you know, I'll pop down. Okay. I, I would uh, love to, to shake your hand and get a picture with you. It's a okay. pleasure. Well, once again, thank you so much for everything tonight. This has been an absolute joy of a conversation Yay. for me. And I appreciate you making some time for me because this is a, it's still a young and independent podcast, but having great guests like you is, is what is good you. for me. So I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I appreciate you. And again, it's people again, with what you do, keeping music alive. So I, so I'm so very grateful. I'll see you on the flip side. Awesome. And that was Stephanie Calvert former vocalist for Starship featuring Mickey Thomas. I need to thank Stephanie for being such a fantastic guest and for being so generous with her time. And I also would like to say I really appreciate that she was willing to come on the show and discuss at length why she's no longer in the band. We covered a wide range of topics in this interview, some that brought up positive emotions, bittersweet emotions, and some topics that were just outright tough to talk about. So I really appreciate Stephanie being so open and candid about everything we discussed. It means quite a bit to me that she would share all of that with us here today. So thank you, Stephanie. Much appreciated. 
Now on a lighter note, be sure to keep your eyes peeled for news about that new band project she told us about. I will post anything I hear on our social media, and once Stephanie has uh, a public social media page or a website, I will share that on my social media as well. So please, again, subscribe to this YouTube channel, find us on Facebook and Twitter, and I will get all of that posted when it's available. Finally, just a quick tease of what's coming for this show. I am currently working on episodes about Ronnie Spector and Wang Chung, so we'll have those up in the coming months. And hopefully some more interviews as well. Otherwise, thank you again for listening. I'm going to play us out with the track Stephanie recorded on Loveless Fascination. This is called Nothing Can Keep Me From You. Hey, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember the big four things you can do to support this show that don't cost a dime. Number one, listen to the show. If you're hearing this now, that means you did this part already. Thank you. There is an infinite amount of content out there, so you choosing to spend some time listening to this show means a great deal to me. Number two, if you like what we did here, please recommend this show to family, friends, or anyone you know who's looking for a podcast, particularly about music. Share our links in Facebook groups, subreddits, and recommendation threads. Whatever you can do is highly appreciated on my end. Number three, find us on social media. Follow us on Twitter at PlayThatPodcast. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash playthatpodcast. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash play that rock and roll. Lots of great material like photos and vlogs on all three platforms. As play that rock and roll is very much meant to be a content hub as well as a podcast. And finally, the big ask. Number four, please give us a five star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. I know this part is a hassle, but it really does help the show a great deal. Not just because it affects the algorithm, but also because it gives me something I can point to when pitching this show to potential guests. The more social media followers and positive ratings the show has, the better chance I have for booking high-profile guests for interviews. So if you take a moment to give us even just a five-star rating, you are actively giving us a tool to do bigger and better things here. But whatever the case, I appreciate any and all efforts you take to support us here at Play That Rock and Roll. Be sure to join us next time for more great stories and music from the world of classic rock. No, I'll try.